Okay, well, I wanted to say a few words today about what I call cost word problems. We get tons of videos of word problems that relate to cost of goods, revenue that's generated, maximize the profit, or variations within that general category. So I wanted to make a little video of everything you ever wanted to know about cost word problems but we're afraid to ask. So I've got a few problems here that I picked out which I thought were some of the better and more difficult cost word problems that we've gotten over the years and also notice that they're not all related rate problems. Some of them actually involve integrals not just derivatives. So that's one of the important things of being good at calculus is to not be only learning based on categorizing of a particular kind of problem. Oh, this is a derivative related rate problem. This is a whatever. You have to be more versatile. Take the information and then react to it however you feel. You know, get sort of that visceral sense of how to react based on the information given. First of all, I want to say a few words about some of the terminology. And so this is like business 101, like a three minute expose on business 101. Cost. Right, so cost, as you all know, is money that goes out the door, right? There's fixed costs. You have to pay for the building or the, the rent for the, uh, the space you have. There's fixed costs for all kinds of things. And then there are variable costs. For example, employee costs are variable costs. Costs of goods are variable costs, etc. But there's cost. Then we have revenue. which is generally the same thing as sales. Revenue and sales, you could say, are more or less equivalent. And this is going to be normally the number of things sold times the price, price per unit. And then we have profit, which is just revenue minus cost. So that's, that's business 101. There's one other term that comes up in calculus, marginal. It's an economics term, and what it refers to is the incremental whatever of a, the, of a particular unit. So marginal revenue is the revenue you get from the nth unit sold, right? So you may, it may be that because of discounting or some other pricing program, your revenue is not, per unit is not constant. The marginal revenue would then, would be the revenue you got from the nth unit sold. Just like marginal cost would be the cost of the nth unit. And since we have here just the nth unit. It's like taking an instantaneous cost or an instantaneous revenue. And so we have, as soon as you hear the word instantaneous, you should be thinking derivative. So it's going to be, in this case, it'd be dr, dn, or dc, dn, where r would be revenue, c is cost, and n is the number of units. And then you would evaluate that at a particular point in order to figure out the marginal. So that's marginal. You'll see, you'll see that in some problems. So now let me erase this and we'll go through these three problems. Let's go through now and solve these problems. The first one has to do with a restaurant that orders seasoning and it decided it needs 2,500 pounds of seasoning per year. And they have a rather bizarre relationship with their seasoning supplier. It costs $4 every time they want to place an order. And then they have an internal cost of $2 per pound per the amount of uh, seasoning that they have in stock, maybe because of refrigeration cost or the space, who knows. So the question is how many orders per year and the amount of each order to minimize the cost. So what we have here is a situation where as time goes on, we start with a certain amount of seasoning, then we deplete it, then we reorder, then we deplete it and reorder so let's do our, uh, every, wor every word problem starts with the same thing, which is the word let. 
let's let x equal the number of orders per year. So now we know that 12 over x is going to be the time between orders, right? And so you can see here that this, if we're doing uh, x orders per year, then this amount here is going to be 2,500 over x, right, because we only have to get so much at a time. And this time between the orders is 12 over x. And notice if we start at this amount, then we go down to zero. It's the same thing as if we were at this amount in a, for the entire period, right, half of it for the entire period. So we can now say the cost is going to be, first of all, we'll take the cost for ordering, which is simple, $4 times the number of orders, plus now the carrying cost. So we have 2500 over x times this 12 over x times 0.5, right, because we have, we're only taking half of it to do, to do this calculation, times 0.5. times two dollars per pound. So then that turns out to be 4x plus 2500 times 12. These two cancel over x squared. Now we want to take the uh, derivative in order to find the minimum, or the point where the minimum occurs. So we'll do C, dc dx is going to be 4 plus, and here we have x to the minus 2, so we have minus 2, 2,500 times 12, and then minus 2 minus 1, x to the minus 3 over x cubed. And we'll let that equal 0. So now if we do a little uh, rearranging here, we have x cubed is equal to twenty five hundred times 12 and we have the 2 here and the 4, right, so this becomes a 2, this cancels out, divided by 2. And now we can just uh, plug this into a calculator. You get, what you get is you get x is equal to about 25, right, so 25 orders per year. And then obviously the time between orders 12 over 25 is a little bit less than uh, twice a month. So now it kind of makes sense, right, because the cost per order, $4, is relatively low compared to the carrying cost. And so it would make sense you want to have smaller. Rather than doing this, you really want something more like this, where you're refilling your stock more often. Okay, I hope this made sense. I think this is a good problem. It's kind of tricky because you're not really sure where to start. And so a little uh, dimensional analysis here, you know, 2,500 pounds times the... Uh, uh, the, the time duration is a good way to start it. Okay, let me erase it and we'll go on to the next one.